Talafoyakina. Good afternoon, everyone. It's good to see you here at prayer meeting this evening. It's so happy to see everybody here gathering together uh, on in the middle of the week. This is one of the um, most beautiful times, or this is one of the most beautiful things about the Seventh Day Adventist Church is that we have a midweek gathering. Amen. Because sometimes uh, during the week, uh, life can be hard. Things can go wrong. We go through our struggles, temptations, and things of that nature. But we thank God that we have a midweek gathering that we can come and be reminded of God's goodness and God's grace for all of us. And also that we may pray together and also encourage one another as we see the great day of the Lord approaching. Amen? And so this is uh, one of the most important times of the church is prayer meeting. Are we together? Because what we're doing here is the power in which where the church gets its power from is through prayer. Amen? In fact, that's why it's called prayer meeting because the power that we receive from the Holy Spirit is received through prayer. Amen? And so again, uh, I, I thank God that we still have this opportunity to come together, study together, and pray together. Amen? Uh, I like to say also, um, if you were not here on Sabbath, I would like to share this, and that is, because uh, the, uh, the reason why is, is because uh, when I learned the gospel, I learned the gospel from an English Bible. And so I only know how to preach and teach from an English Bible. Amen? But I am able to speak Samoan, but only when we just speak in a conversation or getting to know one another. But I can't preach and teach in Samoan, unfortunately. So I hope that doesn't distract you. I hope that doesn't burden you tonight as we share the message tonight in English. Amen? And I do want, I wanted to share these thoughts here before we stop and pray one more time. Notice what the prophet of the Lord says. She says, prayer meeting is what? Is the pulse of the church body. A prayer meeting will always tell the true interest of the church. She goes on to say, again, a prayer meeting will always tell the true interest of the church members in spiritual and what? So she says a good way to see if your church loves spiritual things, she says, if they come to prayer meeting. Are we together? Not coming to Fakasingas where other churches are coming so you can see your friends and see the other youth members and for the youth to see the girls that are coming from the other church. That doesn't, that doesn't set the bar of how spiritual the church is. What sets the bar for the church in whether they are interested in spiritual things is if they come to prayer meeting. Amen? And so I thank God for all of you who are here because that tells me, according to the quote, that you're interested in spiritual things. Amen? Goes on to say, the prayer meeting is as the pulse to the body. It denotes the true spiritual condition of the... How, you, how, how can you tell if a church is spiritually alive or spiritually dead? If they come to prayer meeting. Why? Because prayer is power. Are we together? Without connecting ourselves to the Lord in prayer, we have no power. Are we together? Very important stuff here. Notice it goes on, she says here again, those who are really seeking for communion with God will be seen where? In the prayer room. Faithful to do their duty and earnest and anxious to reap all the benefits they can gain. They will improve every opportunity of placing themselves where they can receive the rays of light from heaven. Powerful quotes here. Are we together? So this, this is a very good measuring rod in terms of the church and also your individual life. And that is whether we or whether I like to come to what? Prayer meeting. 
Manino, is that clear? And so prayer meeting is very important. And so for our study today, as we've started with this very important note, uh, the title of our, our study today is a continuation of our study on Sabbath. Are we together? The continuation of our study on Sabbath, our study today is Beast Mode Part 2. <clears throat> Alright, and so before we go into our study tonight, I want to have one more word of prayer, if that's okay. And we can ask again and plead again for the Holy Spirit to be in this place. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this opportunity that we can come and worship you in spirit and in truth. And Father, we ask for your Holy Spirit to be in this place, to captivate, captivate our minds and our hearts and draw us to you. That Christ would be lifted up, that all men will be drawn unto thee. Forgive us of sin, collectively and individually, that may hinder you from listening or answering our prayer. Let nothing come between the soul and the Savior during, these, during this sacred hour. Is our prayer, we ask that you would bless your people in Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> Beast mode part two. Notice here, we're reminded again, uh, the prophet of the Lord says, there are many precious truths contained in the word of God. But it is what? Present truth that the flock needs now. What for Alam, what it's I mean? Tell me name, present truth, all right? I have seen the danger of the messengers running off from the important points of present truth to dwell upon subjects that are not calculated to unite the flock and sanctify the soul. Satan will here take every possible advantage to injure the cause. But such subjects as the sanctuary in connection with the 2300 days, the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus are perfectly calculated to explain the past Advent movement and show what our present position is. Establish the faith of the doubting and give certainty to the glorious future. These I have frequently seen were the principal subjects on which the messengers should dwell. So what does the church need now? The church needs present truth. The church needs Sifi'al, what it's I mean? Nay, are we together? And some people might say, you know what? I don't think we should concentrate too much on prophecy. I think we should concentrate on the gospel. I think we should concentrate more about Christ and not worry too much about prophecy and the last days. We need to focus on Christ. Have you ever heard something like that before? Have you ever heard pastors or ministers say, eh, forget about Barama, Mephapenga, Cariso, Christ, that's all we need. Have you ever heard something like that? Notice what the prophet says. She says, the present truth the special message given to our world, even the third angel's message, comprehends a vast field containing heavenly treasures. No one can be excusable who says, I will no longer have anything to do with these special messages. I will preach what? Christ. No one can preach Christ and present the truth as it is in Jesus unless he presents the truth that is to come before the people at the what? At the present time when such important developments are taking place. So as we see prophecy being fulfilled, what the truths that need to be brought before the people are the truths of this time. The prophecies that are being fulfilled for this time. Are we together? Notice the key sentence here. No one can preach Christ and the present and present the truth as it is in Jesus unless he presents the that are to come before the people at the present time. So notice the gospel of Jesus Christ is present truth. Or if the name. Are we together? 
So this is very important, guys, as we continue our study here, that present truth is what is needed most for this time. So let's begin our study here in Daniel chapter 4. Daniel <clears throat> Daniel chapter 4 Daniel chapter 4 and I'm not going to fight so I'm going to lose my life and I'm not going to fight so I'm going to lose my life Daniel chapter 4 and I'm going to fight so I'm going to lose my life and I'm not going to lose my life Our mama for our many men Amen. Yeah, our mother tattoo fight so far tassi, far tassi. Ia, So uh, just a reminder from our study on Sabbath that we study that on the sixth day in creation, God created two basic things. He created man in his image and created beast in their image. Amen. And we found out from 2 Peter that one day unto the Lord is like unto a, a thousand years. And we are living right now in the... Uh, <clears throat> The earth, I should say, is about 6,015 years old. So in a sense, as we discussed on Sabbath, we're living in the sixth day. And just like it was in creation in which God created beasts in their image and man was formed in God's image, in our day six, beasts 
Uh, the image of peace will be formed again in regards to the Sunday law and Sunday worship. And also men will be stored unto God's image in the sixth day. Are we following? Again, remember, the primary difference between man and beast is that man was created in the image of God. And when man sinned, they lost God's image. So in a sense, when man lost God's image, they became almost as animals. They became no better than animals. Are we together? And we discussed and we talked about how sometimes, and I shared when I was younger, and I used to fight with my brothers or my sisters, my dad would look at us, or my mom would look at us, and they would say something along the lines, uh, from, uh, they would say something like, right? When we fight, they would look at us and say, why are you guys fighting like, what's a meola? It's an animal. Why are you fighting like animals? Are we together? Why? Because when you're fighting with your brother or sister, in that moment, you don't have the image of God. So when you don't have the image of God, you act like an animal. Are we together? We went over this on Sabbath already. I wish I could review for those of you who work here on Sabbath, but we don't have time. And so we have to move forward and, and, and look at that. And so we discussed that man, when they lose the image of God, they begin to act like animals. Are we together? And so we just read in Daniel chapter 4, whose story did we just read in Daniel chapter 4? Nebuchadnezzar. Did you see that? Did you know Nebuchadnezzar's life is the gospel from beginning to the end? Are you following? Nebuchadnezzar's life is the gospel by the Amatana to the to the end in regards to what we read in Daniel chapter 4. This is how Nebuchadnezzar received a kingdom. He was made king. He received a kingdom. Amen? But then when he sinned, what happened? He lost the kingdom. God took it up away. Are we together? When he sinned, he lost the kingdom, but not only that, he lost the image of God because God turned him into a what? An animal. Are you following? How long was he an animal? How long was he a beast? He was a beast for seven, seven years. What is seven represented of? Seven represents God's perfect Number seven represent completeness, totality, um, a finished work. And so notice, he was a beast for seven years, and after he was humbled in the seven years, what happened? God gave him back the image, his image, and he turned him back into a, a man, and then God gave him back the kingdom. That's the gospel. From beginning to end. Are we together? Adam? He was a king, and, uh, 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 and he was given rulership, and he was given a kingdom. Are we together? God said, Adam, have dominion over the whole earth. So Adam, in a sense, was a king because he was given dominion. He was given a kingdom. But when man fell, what happened? He lost the image of God, and he lost the kingdom, and he became, as it were, a beast or an animal. Are you following? But then he was given a time of probation to be restored into the image of God and then gave him back the, the kingdom. Are we together? He will, he's going to be in heaven. Are you following? Nebuchadnezzar is also going to be in heaven. Are you following? So our whole beast mode uh, study that we had on Sabbath is encapsulated in those verses right there where man was given a kingdom, he was in the image of God, but then when he sinned, his pride, God turned him into an animal, and then when he was restored after seven years, which means a completeness of cycle, he was then given the image of God back, in other words, he was restored into manhood, he was given the kingdom back, and he will be in heaven, just like any of us who will be restored back into the image of God, and will also be in heaven. Are we together? Are we following? So this is very clear, guys, in which um, what we're learning here is that um, we were made, we became beasts because of our sinful lives. We begin to act like animals because of our sinful lives. 
But God is moving to restore us back into His image. Are we together? Why did God restore Nebuchadnezzar back into humanness? Because he became humble. Are you following? Now, how do we be? How are we to be restored back into the image of God? We need to be humble. Are you following? We have to be humble. All right. So this is very clear. So we have to look at very deeply in our hearts and in our minds. And notice Second Corinthians chapter thirteen. Turn our Bibles there. Second Corinthians. Lua konitsun sa upasumatsolo. 2 Corinthians, verse 13, chapter 13, I should say. 2 Corinthians, chapter 13, and notice verse 5. Luar ko nito, sa ubusuma tsolo, ano na fai kwe limba? Ang mawa tato fai tsao iya? The Bible says in English, examine yourselves as to whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Do you not know yourselves that Jesus Christ is in you unless indeed you are disqualified? So notice, as we are going on this journey to be restored back into the image of Christ, the Bible tells us we must examine ourselves. You won't know that you're acting like an animal unless you examine your Self. But the reason why we're not examining ourselves is because we're busy examining somebody else. Which is why we're always talking about somebody else and how they act like an animal and not knowing you're doing the same thing. I say, uh, because we're not examining ourselves. Are we together? Examining where are we spiritually? Where am I spiritually? <clears throat> Do I love to come to prayer meeting? <clears throat> Do I love to come to church? Do I love to come to Yakina? Do I love to fellowship? Do I love to worship God? Why do I come to church? Do I come to church because only mom and dad makes me come to church? Otherwise I get the belt. Do I come to church because I don't want to die in hell? What is our reason for coming to church? Are we together? We have to examine ourselves. Where are we in our spiritual lives? Where are we? Examine ourselves. But you know what? The Bible tells us as a church where we are right now. Go with me to Revelation chapter 3. Notice what the Bible says. Jesus actually examines the church and he tells us where most of us, if not all of us, are in our spiritual lives. Revelation chapter 3. <clears throat> and so notice, just in case, Revelation chapter 3. Look at verse 14. <clears throat> Look at verse... Actually... Um, Let's look at it. Let's look at verse 17. Let's go to verse 17. Well, my own. That's what I tell you. If I up was full of it, but if I up will lose full. Yeah. So that is, this is a familiar verse to Adventists. Ah, in my son Yatatso, if I if I tell the 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 fighting of Tsau Kwetso over and over and over and over almost are we together? Where it talks about Laodicea, right? We understand what Laodicea is. Amen. So we know our 
our, our, our condition as a church. Are we together? And the Bible tells us, we're not hot, we're not cold, but what are we? Luke, warm. Are we together? In other words, we're not hot for Jesus, but we're not cold because we're not all the way out in the world, but we're somewhere in the middle. In other words, are we together? We like the world and we like Jesus. But we had to let go of one of them. Are we together? This is why when we go to the story of Elijah, Elijah says, how long must you waver between two opinions? If God is God, serve Him. But if Baal is God, serve Him. In other words, what was happening in the time of Elijah is the same thing that's happening today. In the time of Elijah, the time of Elijah, people like to worship God, but they also like to worship Baal. So Elijah had to say, he came before the people, he says, how long will you go back between two opinions? And so Elijah, again, in his message for these last days, he's asking the same question to the church. How long are you and I going to waver between two opinions? If God is God, then serve Him. If the world is God, then go serve the, the world. Are we following? And so notice, guys, we're told here that there are two masters. Elua. Elua Natai. Yeah? Either O Yesu or Two masters. Amen? That's what's being told to us in Revelation chapter three. Uh, chapter three. Are you following? Or the Are you following? But what do we know from the Bible? The Bible says you cannot serve two masters. Either you will love the one and hate the other, or you will love the other and hate the one. <clears throat> but because we're lukewarm, what is that telling us about a lot of us in the church? <clears throat> that most of us, if not all of us, are serving two masters. That's why we're Luke, that's why we're lukewarm. Are you following? And so because we serve two masters and because we're lukewarm, the Bible tells us that in other words, he's knocking on the door of our hearts. In other words, if Jesus is knocking on the door of our hearts, where is Jesus? Jesus is not in our hearts, but he's outside. No wonder why it bear for me. Are you following? No wonder why it bear for me. Now I want us now I want to remind the church today that what we talk about are tough things that we must talk about. Amen? These are not easy subjects to discuss with the church. But this is not about condemnation. This is about education. Are we together? I wish I could translate that. This is not about condemning, condemning the church. This is about educating the church and awaking the church. Arise and awake. Why? Because time is almost finished. This is why it's a fear. Amen? And so we must arise and challenge the church to wake up because time is almost finished. Are we together? So this is very important. So notice Revelation 3 tells us the heart of our condition. And notice the Bible also tells us that it says we are lukewarm because we say we are rich and in need of nothing. Are we together? 
I can't hear. Are we together? That's our condition, right? The church is filled with people that says, I am rich and in need of nothing. Now, when I read this, I'm thinking, who in the church is saying that I am rich and in need of nothing? Are we together? Because last time I checked, Right? So why would people say that? Oh. Now watch. I looked up the upu e the upu for rich. Ah, mawal, right? Because it was just here in the New Testament, natusi fa eleni, right? So I went to the to the root word or rich. The Greek word for rich is plosios. Plosios. Or the upu eleni ne mole upu rich le fa ma il fa lingam sa upetolo. Rich. Ah, this word means. This word means, first meaning is, it means wealthy, abounding in what? Material resources. That's the first definition. The second definition is metaphoric. It means abounding, abundantly supplied, or it means abounding rich in Christian virtues and eternal possessions. So notice, usually we translate this to mean that we're rich and in need of nothing, and we usually only interpret it in a spiritual sense. Ah. We usually interpret it but there's a physical sense in which this statement is true. Notice, it says that the church is going to have a lot of people that's going to be saying, I am, in, I am rich and in need of nothing. But how many rich people do you know that's in Yakina? Anybody rich here? Anybody here with a lot of money? Not really, right? So why would, people, why would we say I am rich in a physical sense? Because that's what it says, wealthy, abounding in what? Right? So why would people in the church say I am rich and in need of nothing when we're really not rich? Does that make sense? Right? But here's the thing. Notice. It's not so much that we're saying that we're rich and in need of nothing but it's the mindset that I want to be rich and in need of nothing. Now that makes more sense. Um, it's not so much That's the mindset. Are we together? So when you're in a mindset, if you're when you're in that mindset, did you know that when you're trying to be rich, it's going to take up all of your time? energy in my way this is the disease of God's church today. When I made that so treasures, I will find out what treasures he fell. So, what we see in my way of all, if I ever find out what I want to do, 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 and they suffer from the tongue. Which tells us what? That's more important than, than this. Are you following? Now that makes more sense because a lot of us, <clears throat> a lot of us, we claim Jesus. We claim that God is our provider, but really we are our own provider. We want to go and make a lot of money to the point where we don't need anything else. But did God, ever, did God ever say for His people to go make a lot of money so you don't need anything else anymore? Is that, did God, do you ever find that in the scriptures where Did God ever say that? No. So, who, 
somewhere in our minds that we should go in Matuasu'ele or who put that in our minds? Are you following? Are we together? Notice with me, go with me to Matthew. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 6. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 6. Let me know when you're there by saying amen. amen. We're going to read verse 19 to 21. If I tell you that I'm going to say, 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 I'm going to So notice the Bible says, where do we put our treasure? Where do we put our treasure? In, lay our treasures in, heaven. Are we together? But is that what many of us are doing? Are we sending our treasures in heaven? Lay our treasures in heaven. What is it talking about? <clears throat> what does it mean to lay our treasures in heaven? This is a familiar verse. We should we should somewhat understand this. Lay our treasures in heaven. <clears throat> okay, what does it mean to lay your treasures on earth? Sorry? Okay, so notice guys, laying our treasures in heaven, meaning have money in the bank, have cars, have houses, have a 401k, have retirement, have all, all this, all of our treasures is where, is that, in other words, all of our money is being spent where? Down here. All of our money, our resources is spending on our lives down here. But I should have to lay the le budget more 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 evangelism. Go kick your eyes cope. Ah, if you will go out now, we can see a mic cope. If if I allow him, mama. Ah, we spend it or 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 sell it to pay tax or sana. But because we're using it for worldly treasures, then we go ask the mission for money to come help us. Why are we asking the mission for money when God has already given us the money to do evangelism? But we're not using it for evangelism, we're using it for 20 inch rims on our cars. We're using it for 55 inch TVs in our houses. We're using it to add another car to our portfolio. We're using it, if I were to see family or the CPC or the island, they will be a little vacation, okay, I will see family or the And then my stupid self to know that's if I evangelism. Are you following? So notice guys, lay my treasures on earth meaning spends all of our money on things on the earth. But lay my treasures in heaven is bringing our resources and our money to build the kingdom of God. Amen? And so this is very clear that God is saying lay your treasures where? <clears throat> in heaven. So therefore, <clears throat> let's keep reading. Go with me, uh, jump down to verse 24. So notice here the Bible says, you cannot serve two masters, right? The Bible says in English, Matthew 6, verse 24, 
No one can serve what? Two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and what? Despise the other. It says you cannot serve God and now what is it? Money. Money. Are we together? You cannot serve God and money. So remember guys, remember how we read in Revelation chapter 3, right? It says we think we are rich and in need of nothing. That doesn't necessarily mean that we're all rich, but it's the mindset that we want to be rich. In other words, we'll feel more, uh, we want to be rich, we want to go out and look for money so we can get to the point where we're rich and in need of nothing. Are we together? And so notice here, the Bible says, it's clear, Set your treasures in heaven, not on earth. In fact, you cannot serve two masters. Either you love the one or hate the other. You cannot serve God and money. So what is one of the main issues in which God's people will go through in these last days? One of the main issues that they will go through is whether they were going to serve God or whether they're going to serve money. Money. Are we together? How many people here like money? Oh, we don't want to be honest today. Okay. Right? Ang ang sausage e e offer le million matala sa sangatsa e usu mal le 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 phone talo e tumu at sa le 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 for sa ah right? Permitting starts at seven o'clock and we just walk in whenever we feel like it, right? But when it comes to our jobs, kakong halimba, from my own palang ni kaya ko de ramo, e kaya ko yo halimba was it's five fifty. Ah, when we go to our jobs, the white man says you better be there at six o'clock. You show up at five forty-five. But when it comes to church at seven o'clock prayer meeting, we come in at seven fifteen. I say, ah, we like money more. Notice what the notice what it says here. It says no one can serve two masters. Now, I underline those words for a reason. Notice the two words. It says, hate, love, or loyal, and what? Despise. Which two words go together, and which two words go together? Hate and despise, love, and loyal. Do you know why the young people love the world because they're loyal to the world that's why it's so hard for you to pull them away are we together do you know why young people love their parents because they're loyal to their parents are we together so the key is to get them to be loyal to God and they'll love God with all their hearts do you know why we love money because we're loyal to money. Olale fa samore loyal. Fa maoni, right? If fa maoni tato i tupe. The reason why I love fa tato i tupe because if fa maoni tato i i tupe, right? Do you know why we're loyal to money? Because money is good to us. Amen. Money pays our bills. Money makes the fan go like this, so we can be cool because of it. Money turns on the fans and the and the air conditioning. Money brings me peace during the time of my storm. I'm in it. Money helps me with father and love. Money pays my car payment. Money pays my mom or my dad that uh, you know needs a coupon. Money is a very good thing. This is why we're loyal to it. Are we together? But notice, everything I just mentioned, did you know that Jesus is supposed to be that for you? <clears throat> Are you following? We're taking what we're supposed to give to Jesus and we're giving it to, to money. Money gives me peace. Well, Jesus is supposed to give you peace. Money provides me to pay my bills. Well, Jesus is supposed to provide you with that. Are we together? This is why we're so loyal to it. Uh, understand that, but notice, money was given to us as a blessing by God. Money is not the root of all evil. It's the love of money. 
is the root of all evil. Money was supposed to be a blessing which God gave so we can use as a blessing, but we took the blessing and made it the God. Are you following? So notice this is why this is very important now. This is why we have to take our trust off of money and we have to put our trust in, in God. Have you ever seen a one dollar bill? Have you ever seen this? I'm in it. Have you ever seen this dollar bill? The church should be used to seeing this because it fills our offering plates. Right? It it the Lord's fullum, but the Lord's fullum, I sell out, it will make come a local. They have a faiki fanga, ma fai, fai simia la langi, and my come by a fai lo. Right? Notice, look at what the money says. It says, in God we. Even the money is telling you to trust God and you're putting your trust in the money. Are we together? Very important stuff here that we're looking at. Now, watch this. So now it makes sense, huh? What's up when you do my huh? Notice, God is saying, I'm the one that provides for your food. I'm the one that provides for your clothes. I'm the one that provides for everything else. See ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of these things will be what? Added unto you. We're we'll together. So notice, God is saying, I'm the one that gives you all that stuff, not the money. Are we together? In other words, even if for some reason money was to be useless, we can be at peace because we know where our food is going to come from. We know where our clothes is going to come from. We know where our rent money is going to come from. We know where our car payment money is going to come from. So notice guys, we have to take the trust that we've been having on money to try to be rich and put it on God. Because guys, soon and very soon, if you continue to put your trust in money, you're going to lose out. Why? Because when money is no longer able for us to be used, it will not bother you because you never put your trust in money, you put it in who? Now, we understand that soon and very soon, we're not going to be able to use money. We all know that, right? You cannot buy or sell, which means you cannot use money. 
Are we together? We cannot use money, so therefore, the mentality of any type of if you are so simple, of an instrument type of The mentality that we put our trust in money, we have to take it away. Why? Because soon and very soon, when the Sunday law has passed, and you can't use money, it shouldn't matter because you never put your trust in money. But if you put your trust in money, and the Bible says, the only way you can use money by buying or selling is by getting the mark of the, of the beast. You're going to go get the mark of the beast because not a fa'amu'l mu'l in the Are you following? This is very clear, guys. At this moment, in this very hour, we are to make sure God is going to take away... That's why the main reason why God is going to take away the money from us. So that it will show us money is not our provider. Money will not bring me peace. Money is not going to save me. Only God can save me. Only God can provide for me. Only God is my provider. Are we together? She says, the prophet here, Satan says, For fear of bouncing food and clothing, they, the church, will join the world in transgressing what? God's law. That means, for any of us, if I am more to be a mayumai, mayi, Iyaku, mayi, le tato ofu, or tato wai, e tato ofu wai, the prophet said, for my name, the, uh, the, no, for my name, the prophet said, that we will join the world in transgressing God's law. Are you following? Very key things. This is all connected. Everything in the Bible has last day events written all over it. Are we together? This is why we must now seek to put all of our trust in Him. I had, I've, I've, I've had many conversations with many people about uh, whether they should start moving away and, 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 and cutting down and working in their jobs. And I, and I always tell them, be prayerful about what you do. I'm not telling you to go quit your job. What I am telling you is, be prayerful about what to do. Right now, we should spend most of our time preparing our hearts and our minds for the kingdom of heaven. Not working 12, 14 hour shifts at work. The reason why we're putting 12, 14 hour shifts at work is so that we can get the money and pay our own bills. Well then if you pay your own bills, or fairly room, where's the room for your faith? If I'm to a toilet or if I'm a word, so that you can have time to spend in his Bible and pray. So you can Are you following? Right now is the time in which we need to spend in scripture, Bible study, and prayer to prepare for ourselves for heaven, not at work, slaving away for 12, 14 hours, 16 hours a day. Let God provide for you because you're going to trust in Him because the time is coming in which we're going to have to be tested whether we trust Him or not. And so we're going to wrap it up by going to the book of Luke chapter 8. Luke chapter 8.
So notice here, this is the story of, we're continuing again from beast mode, where this is the story of the demoniacs, which the Bible says here, verse 26, then they sailed, then they sailed to the country of the Gadarenes. So the Gadarenes, which is opposite of Galilee. Now we know the story, notice here, the Bible tells us that when Jesus came onto the shore, demoniac. Demoni? From my le the to see a desire of ages. The desire of ages says when these demoniacs ran toward Jesus. From my desire of ages, from my desire of ages, from my desire ages, and the, the, the desire of ages says, Jesus held up his hand and they couldn't come any further. Jesus held up his hands and they couldn't come any further. And then the Bible says, the demons talk and they say, what? So what do we have to do with you, Son of God? Have you come to cast us out into the abyss? If I tell that the the story there, the Matthew says that the de the, mo the demoniac says to Jesus, "Have you come to torment us before the time?" Ah, uh, the demon says, "Have you come to torment us before the time?" In other words. The demons know the time that they're going to be tormented. Which is why they said, Have you come to torment me before the God's people should know how close we are, but we don't know because we haven't been studying the scriptures. But God wants you to know today. Amen. So notice that the demon says, Are you going to cast us out into the abyss? And, and then they asked Jesus, can we go and be cast into the swine? Or if I saw what what I yes? The the for my testimony if you will the the swine, the pigs. And so Jesus gives them permission. Notice guys, the demons cannot go anywhere without asking without asking God. Just going from the man to the pigs. They had to ask Jesus permission. That's the God you serve. That's the God you worship. A God that has control over the devil and his angels. They can't move without God saying, okay, you can go ahead and move. And so they trembled and they got they came out of the man and they went into the into the pig. Into the pigs. Are we together? And then what happened to the pigs? They ran down into the ocean and they all drowned, right? And then the Bible says, much as for you, that when they did that, then all the people that came notice uh, verse 
verse 34, Taupa tells my father, when those who fed them saw what had happened, they fled and told it in the city and in the country. Then they went out to see what had happened and came to Jesus and found the man from whom the demons had departed, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. And so notice, uh, after they saw that, they looked at... Um, Verse 37, Then the whole multitude of the surrounding region of the Galileans asked Jesus to depart from them, for they were seized with great fear, and he got into the boat and returned. So notice, <clears throat> Jesus healed the demoniacs. The demoniacs were no longer naked, and they were now in their right mind. <laughs> Very same thing like the demoniacs. When he cast the demons out, for these guys. And so, when they came, the people that were watching the pigs, they went and told the country, and they told the city, Manitoba. They all came to see what happened, and when they came, the Bible says, they saw the demoniacs, that they were very much awful, but notice, they didn't even notice that. They skipped them and they went to look for the what? For the pigs. And they said, what happened to the pigs? Well, they were healed by Jesus. They were healed by Jesus. But what happened to the pigs? Remember our last presentation on Sabbath? as humanity, more Are we together? They didn't even pay attention to them. They went and said, what happened to the pigs? And said, oh, the demons went into the pigs and they went to the ocean. So the people were afraid, and then what did they do? They said, Jesus, from the morning, was the one that had an heir to a four year America. Whatever the Manaho he. Are we together? Notice what um, the prophet tells us here about this. Now these men were clothed and in their right mind, sitting at the feet of, listening to his words and glorifying the name of him who had made them whole. But the people who beheld this wonderful scene did not rejoice. The loss of the swine seemed to them of greater moment than the deliverance of these, these captives. It was in mercy to the owners of the swine that this loss had been permitted to come upon them. They were absorbed in and cared not for the great interest of Jesus desired to break the spell of selfish. Uh, and we'll end it there. Jesus desired to break the spell of selfishness. So notice, they didn't really care about the, the men, they cared more about the, the swine. Are we together? Now, why did they care more about the swine than they did about the men? Here's one of the reasons why they cared about the swine more than they cared about the men. Notice, Matthew chapter 7 verse 6 says, Do not give what is holy to the dogs, nor cast your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and tear and turn and tear you away in pieces. So is Jesus, call, is Jesus talking about literally swine? <clears throat> what is he talking about? He's talking about people. Ah, that's what we talk about. Just by hearing Matthew, we talk about fitsu or no fire or no. Fight or fight, that's it. Matthew, we talk about fitsu or no fire or no. Amawa le Matthew, we talk about fitsu or no fire or no. Fight or fight, that's it.
So it's outside of Yesu Ipwa literally. Is Jesus talking literally about Puas? Yes or no? No, he's not talking about literal Puas. Who is he calling Puas? People. Are we together? People. Jesus called them pigs. Why did he call certain people pigs or why did he call people dogs? Notice what, the, notice what the prophet says. She says, Jesus here refers to a class who had no desire to escape from the law. Slavery of sin. By indulgence in the corrupt and vile, their natures have become so degraded that they cling to the evil and will not be separated from it. The servants of Christ should not allow themselves to be hindered by those who would make the gospel only a matter of contention and ridicule. In other words, but there are people who have no interest in it. They don't want to hear it. Why? Because they don't want to escape from the slavery of sin. Jesus says, don't give, don't cast your pearls to the swine. Don't waste your time. Because they're not going to listen. They don't want to listen. And they don't want nothing to do with it. Jesus says, let them alone. Let them alone. Are you following? So notice, this is why, one of the reasons why they care more about the swine than the men who were changed by Jesus is because they were swine. The people. They were swine. That's why they cared more about the swine, about the pigs, because they were pigs. They weren't interested in the gospel changing people's lives. They were interested in the, they were interested in the pigs. Why? Because they were pigs. Are you following? Pigs, according to, is our people who are not interested in the gospel. Which is why this statement here says that here. It says, they were absorbed in earthly things and cared not for the greater interest of spiritual life. They're not interested in that. Are we together? And so notice, let's uh, continue on. She goes on to say here, um, oh, she goes on to say here, but regret and indignation for their temporal loss blinded their eyes to the Savior's mercy. The manifestation of supernatural power aroused the superstitions of the people and excited their fears. Further calamities might follow from having this stranger among them. They apprehended financial ruin and determined to be free from his presence. They well, they, they were paying attention, they cared more about the pigs than they did about the men, is because they looked at that as a financial ruin. They lost money when those pigs went into the ocean. So when they came, they didn't care about the souls that were just saved by Jesus, they cared more about they lost their money. Are we together? They lost their money. And so because they lost their money, they told Jesus to, so get out, please leave. We care more about our money than we do about these men. Jesus leaves. This is all very significant, guys. Do you know why? And we're going to end it right here. Jesus came to a country to free people filled with demons, free them from them so that they can be clothed and in their right mind. But those people that seem to be already clothed and in their right mind, they're not interested in that, they're interested in their money. Are we together? And so Jesus, mercifully, according to the prophet, gets rid of their money, and so when they got rid of their money, or made their money go to the ocean, they told Jesus, please leave the country. Are you following? This is all significant because this, uh, notice. <clears throat> the people of the United States have been a favored people. 
But when they restrict religious liberty, surrender Protestantism, and give cabinets to popery, the measure of their guilt will be full and national apostasy will be registered in the books of heaven. When the Sunday law passes, that's America telling Jesus to leave. Are you following? A pasirole, a famalosirole, it's a poinga lechasa. That is, that is the United States, the country of the United States, telling Jesus to leave. Are we, are we together? Just like what we learn here, before they asked Jesus to leave, what happened first? A financial crisis. One more time. So before the Sunday law passes, what we're learning here is, it's supermomole, financial crisis crisis. Are we together? I hope you don't love money too much because there's going to be a financial crisis. Notice this says also, national apostasy will follow by national ruin. Moving on. It says, money seems to them to be a dead loss that does not bring immediate returns when invested in the work of saving souls. The very means that is now so sparingly invested in the cause of God and that is selfishly retained will in a little while be cast with all idols to the moles and to the bats. Money will soon depreciate in value very suddenly when the reality of eternal scenes open to the senses of men. Notice what this says. Time is what? Holy wealth will soon be and the prophet from my here fits us soon and very soon and it's it's going to be worthless you're going to go have you heard what happened in Greece many in a bank are we together? Did you know that's coming to the United States? You're, we, you, you are a territory, but what happens in the motherland is going to happen here. One day, it can help with a bank, it lays a tupe. Then what are you going to do? What's a matter of that's what? It's a popular place here. Because I'm a Swiss woman to spoil here for my own here. It's a woman, my own man, my own man, my own man. It's a tupe. Amen. Therefore, it is popular to not so let tour because it is too not so far more not so faith in what to be, and too not so far more not so not so faith in them in their tour. Amen. This is why don't worry about making money and trying to, it's all about to collapse. Notice, Pope Francis warns the global economy as well. The whole thing is coming down. Pope Francis warns the global economy is near collapse. Notice, the global economy system is near collapse, according to Pope Francis. An economy built on money worship and war and scared by yawning equality and youth unemployment cannot survive. We are excluding an entire generation to sustain a system that is, that is not good. Our global economic system can't take any Revelation chapter 13. Revelation chapter 13. And Yes. Can we buy and sell right now? Yes. But the Bible tells us 
there's going to come a time where we cannot buy or sell. In other words, when the economy is at its zenith, and my finances are fatal, are fatal, my finances are fatal, my. Amen. In other words, in order for the for us not to be able to buy or sell, a new economy has to come in. Mama, we need a new economy for or many from my little puppy professors. He says our global economic system can't take anymore. It cannot survive. Are we together? Who is now? Notice this is Pope Francis. He's telling us that the system we have now is not a good system. We need a a new one. When you hear Pope Francis say we need a new economic system, all of the Seventh Day Adventists should have awakened and said, "Oh, oh," because the new one is going to be a system in which we cannot buy or sell unless you have the mark of the beast. More on. Pope Francis denounced the influence of war in the military on the global economy in particular. It says, we discard a whole generation to maintain an economic system that no longer endures. Notice, this is Senator Ron Paul. He is a congressman in the United States. Let's see, one evening I was watching ESPN back at home to watch some of the uh, highlights and some of the news that were going on on MSNBC, CNBC, uh, all the top, all the top news station. And when uh, the people in the United States were watching this, this commercial came on with this man here, which is Dr. Ron Paul, who is a United States congressman or used to be a United States congressman. The commercial said he warned all the people in America the economy is about to collapse. When I saw that commercial, I went down on my knees and said, "Lord, you're about to come. You're about to come. Why? Because to provide financial from my Lord and country, Yeshu, from where I'm from. Are we together?" To provide financial for my own United States Sunday law, which means basically, Yeshu, thank you for being here. Goodbye. Are you following? This is Dr. Paul in the, in the news article. He says he he says here, Dr. Paul was in the national nation's capital to educate Americans on what he believes our country's next financial crisis will look like. He says America is on the verge of a real currency crisis, the likes of which we have not seen in more than 50 years. Few people in America today have Dr. Paul's knowledge of the inner workings of both the government and the U.S. financial system. After all, Dr. Paul spent more than two decades in Congress. He served on the House Banking Committee and the Committee on Foreign Affairs. He sponsored more than 600 legislative bills. He met with every president of the past 40 years and every Fed chairman. And Dr. Paul believes a major currency crisis is coming to America sooner than most people think. During his visit, recent visit in Washington, he said, "The way you live, work, travel, retire, and invest in America, everything is going to change. Suddenly, in ways most people do not expect." This period is going to be particularly tough on seniors and anyone relying on a fixed income or money from the government. Anybody on food stamps is going to affect you. Anybody on welfare is going to affect you. Notice trouble is coming. Please make sure that you, your family, and anyone you care about are prepared. In a video interview, here's what Dr. Paul says. He says, "How bad will this financial crisis be?" He says, "I think it's going to be very bad. I think it will be worse than our Great Depression. I think it will be worse than the crisis we had in 2008, 2009. In short, I think we, as a nation, are on the brink of a massive financial crisis, infinitely worse than the crisis in 2008. And that's because there won't be a mortgage or banking problem, but a full-blown currency crisis." In the lives that we've never seen in this country, the savings of many could be wiped out overnight, and the stock market could crash by 50% or more. The way of life we've enjoyed as Americans for the past 50 years could come to an end. It is not a question of if this will happen, but when. Most people don't have a clue on what's going on. 
They had no idea that we produced $4 trillion out of thin air, and since 2006, we've doubled our national debt. So notice, the reason why our economy is going to crash is because our money is becoming worthless. I said, because remember, the reason why our money is worth is because we're supposed to have gold in, behind it to give it value, right? But notice, if we're broke, and Prince Michael be. My Prince, 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 but it ain't it all. I gave the value of the two bit. The value of the money, the more you print, the value goes down. Almost to where the money becomes like play money, monopoly money. Useless. Are we together? Did you know they tell me uh, the dark ages? Or well, I don't know they find someone of the dark ages. They, they, they tell someone from Isaac, the dark ages. During that time, my lower classes, my I tell me not, I don't support it, tell me not. Lower classes, the very rich and the very poor. Question, how many classes in America? There's three. You have the rich, you have the middle class, and you have the poor. If the papacy comes back to reign, which class has to be eliminated? The middle class. The middle class is what the economy of America is built on. Are we together? But if you destroy the money, take away the value, well, there is a middle class. Now come back here, oh, well, mga kailangan niya. Just like the dark ages. Are we together? They're destroying the value of money. Notice it says, when you destroy a currency, you can destroy a what? An entire economy. And that's what they need to do. To get rid of the old one and bring in the, the new one, so that way they can control who is able to buy and sell. They're able to control. So not do you see how close we are? Time is almost finished. Notice, goes on to say, when this currency crisis hits, the government's number one priority is to control the existing supply of. We'll see all kinds of new laws, rules about what you can do with your. In other words, who can buy and who can sell. He does, he's not a Seventh day Adventist. But he's telling us everything God already told us in the Bible. government, they are telling us Are we together? Notice this. Do you know who this is? My dad said he, that's his uncle, Bill Gates. He's one of the wealthiest men in the world. Notice what Bill Gates says. He said, Bill Gates calls for a what? A global government. Notice he says, uh, Gates went on to stress his position further, stating that a global government was badly needed in order to combat an array of issues ailing the planet. Notice he says down here, the billionaire made headlines last week after introducing a plan to implement a cashless system. He says, in multiple world countries, a program that would undoubtedly give financial elites total control over monetary. That's what they want. Because if they can control it, they can stop your car from working. Yeah, if they take away the cash, and let's say they put all the money on cars, it's easy to control. Are we together? This is what's happening over there. I don't know if our people in Samoa are paying attention. But you should. It's a Tamatatso Matsala, Mela Tsupui Omanika, because of Mela Tsupui Omanika. This is what's going to set in place. Are we together? This is very serious times that we're living in. That's our presentation. For today, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Do not put your trust in money. Put your trust in God.
Get prepared for your families. This is why Ellen White tells us in the book Country Living, what does it tell? My children before I wake up, or for my day, for the for twelve hours of events, for my own time, my children before you all, it's a time for all the women, so we for the men, fight the what we call the country. It's a tour I might so may I ero by matzo because the old time in the final tattoo matzo fatal and so fat so my Elisia Afaina because we're late to tour may I. Are we together? So in a sense you guys are okay, well I hope so, because even though you're living in uh, in Samoa where you can grow your food, many of us are still going to the grocery stores to buy our food. Are we together? We have to now train our families and our children fruits, vegetables. Are we together? And so God wants all of us to be ready. It's going to happen very quickly, but God will love my little Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time you've given us. That we may understand these things that are about to come upon the world. You have told us that the final movements will be rapid ones. Thank you, Father, for helping your people endure your message tonight. That they may be aroused. That they might be challenged and awakened from their sleep. To get ready, get ready, get ready. For the final movements are right upon us. And the close of probation is right before us. But you want us to be all ready. So that when the close of probation does close. We shall be sealed with your seal. Reflecting the image of your son Jesus Christ. May we come to you now while your arms are wide open. And receive your salvation. And that we may take part in eternal life and take part in spending time with you forever and ever. This is our prayer. Thank you for hearing us. In Jesus' name.